this video we're going to show you how quick and easy it is to install and commission the EtherHall small form factor which applies to both V-band and E-band gigabit radio links. These are the tools you'll need for the installation. A digital voltmeter. A 7mm hex socket and equivalent opened end wrench to mount the bracket. A 10mm hex socket or equivalent opened end wrench to align the radio. A 13mm hex socket or equivalent open wrench to open the radio caps. A medium head Phillips screwdriver to ground the radio. The mounting bracket is packed in a separate box and already assembled for use. The bracket is suitable for any pole size between 1 inch up to 12 inches using the proper bands to hold it. We supply two scalable self-locking bands in the box suitable up to a 12 inch maximum diameter. In order to allow the antenna to move freely during the alignment, unlock both the azimuth and the elevation lock bolts using the 7mm hex socket tool. Make sure you unlock all bolts. Then center the azimuth and elevation adjustments by turning the alignment bolts. For the elevation, this will be zero and for the azimuth, the middle of the scale. Note that the brackets in their default installation position support between plus 10 to minus 60 degrees, making them suitable for most installation scenarios where radios are installed at roughly the same height, plus minus 10 degrees. Install the mounting bracket to a fixed and stable reinforced steel mounting pole using the correct bands according to the pole diameter. Point the mounting bracket at the remote site. In cases where there is a large height difference between the sites requiring a larger angle greater than 10 degrees, the bracket may be rotated upside down to gain up to 60 degrees in elevation. Note that the bracket will allow the radio to be angled down to minus 45 degrees before hitting the pole. If this is insufficient, you may purchase a dedicated elevation extension plate from Seclu that will allow an angle of up to minus 60 degrees. Assemble the elevation extension plate to the mounting kit. Use the provided hex bolts to attach it to the bracket. Unpack the radio and its accessories. The radio comes with an integrated antenna. Note that the antenna is treated with a hydrophobic coating designed to repel rain. Note the protective plastic cover on the antenna. Leave this cover in place for now to protect the antenna during the installation. Remember to remove it just prior to aligning the antenna. Attach the provided hex bolts to the back of the radio. Mount the radio to the bracket and fasten the hex bolts using a 7mm flat open end wrench. Align the radio so that it is pointing in the direction of the remote unit. The plastic alignment tube may be used to assist with this. Make sure the inner circle is centered with the outer circle. Once done, Lock the steel bands. The radio must be grounded using a copper cable of at least 16 gauge and in accordance with local electrical codes. It is recommended to use surge protectors on the Ethernet cables to protect from surges caused by lightning or power irregularities. Indoor surge protectors are available for purchase from Seclu. All cables connected to the radio should be shielded and terminated with metallic connectors. Cables should be outdoor grade category 5E or above and have UV protection. This is the front panel of the EtherHall small form factor radio. The radio has three gigabit ethernet ports. Port 1 is used for data as well as PoE in for powering up the radio. Ports 2 and 3 are used for both data and PoE out. A utility push button is located next to port 1. A short press on this push button will switch the radio into alignment mode. Pressing it again will switch the radio back to normal operating mode. 
Pressing the button for 10 seconds will clear the radio settings to the factory default. The radio can be powered by power over Ethernet or, alternatively, by an Ethernet to DC adapter. Both options should be connected to port 1. Plug in the Ethernet cable to the Data Plus power port of a power over Ethernet device. Here the DC power option is in the 36 to 57 volt range by connecting an RJ45 DC adapter to port 1. In this case, the port will be used for power only. Ethernet to DC adapters can be purchased from CCLU separately. Three sets of protective all-weather shells are provided in each radio box. Each fits a different cable diameter ranging from 3.5 mm to 9 mm. Select a rubber gasket that best fits the Ethernet cable diameter. Note the rubber gasket is split and can be assembled on cables with connectors. Connect the Ethernet cable or the DC connector to port 1 of the radio. Secure the all-weather shell by hand only. Do not use tools to lock it. Before powering up the radio, remove the plastic cover from the antenna. You can now safely power up the radio. The power LED illuminates red and then blinks green until the radio is fully booted, a process which takes about 90 seconds. The alignment of the radio can be performed in the default operational mode. To do this, make sure that the antennas are visually aligned as much as possible and that the radio link is up, indicated by a green RF LED. The EtherHall small form factor antenna's beam is wide enough and the distance is short enough that this should be easy. Make sure that both radios are in the same operational mode before starting the alignment. Connect the alignment RSSI adapter supplied in the box to port 3 to read the received signal strength indication, or RSSI. Set the digital voltmeter to measure DC voltage. The voltage reading will be between 0 and 1 volt, indicating the RSSI in dBm. The voltage reading is equivalent to the received signal level. For example, a reading of 0.35 volts is equivalent to an RSSI of minus 35 dBm. The objective in aligning the antenna is to achieve an RSSI which is in line with the pre-calculated RSSI value derived from the link analysis. The target is reached when the RSSI is within plus minus 4 dB of the pre-calculated RSSI value. To align the radio, use the 10 mm hex socket or suitable open-end wrench. The azimuth and elevation are adjusted by using the dedicated adjustment bolts. Sweep over both azimuth and elevation till the antenna's main lobe is pointing at the remote radio with the strongest measured signal. Once the optimal position has been reached, tighten and lock all bolts. After locking all the bolts, Use the DVM to verify that the RSSI has not changed. In case you find it hard to optimally align the link in its normal operational mode, you can use the alignment mode. Switch the radio into alignment mode with a short press on the utility push button found on the panel next to port 1. Note that you will need a pin to do this. The orange RF LED indicates that the radio is in alignment mode and is ready to be aligned. Pressing the utility button again will switch the radio back to normal operational mode. Remove the voltmeter from port 3 and refit its cap, tightening it with a 13mm hex tool so that it seals properly. With both antennas aligned and locked, verify that the RF LED on both radios is green, indicating that the radio link is up. Any kind of data can now be streamed transparently over the radio link. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please visit us at cclue.com.